rock. We got a rock. Um, First item is the pledge of allegiance. Come back, George. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So much for the well. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the TNC meeting. We've got a fairly short agenda tonight. Um, let's see. First item is approval of minutes. I wasn't at the meeting, so if someone will approve what Move they to thought adopt as presented. Second. Motion is uh, on the table. Those in favor say aye. 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 We oppose like sign. Passes unanimously. Okay. First item is Morningstar Reform Presbyterian Church. This is an item that's on consent. It's quasi-judicial. And do we need to be sworn, Glenn? On it. Yes. Okay, anybody who's going to speak at this, speak to this item should stand and be sworn in. Do you swear or... It, oh, wait, we stand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? It's not a public hearing, but we if there's someone that has something in the audience, we probably will be glad to hear what you have to say. Uh, okay, John. This is... A request by Morningstar Church for administrative permit use for a high school. Administrative permit use requires action by the Planning and Zoning Commission, and that's why the application is here before you all here tonight. They're not proposing any exterior construction just to add the use of the high school to the present place of worship. The site's located just north of Oslo Road and just south of Timber Ridge. Uh, the Timber Ridge is the RM6 zoning Oslo Road to the south. The site is zoned CL, limited commercial, and the church is a permitted use. Again, the high school is an administrative permit use. All of this area is zoned CL. Area across Timber Ridge Trail is zoned office, commercial, residential. Area to the south and to the east is uh, limited commercial, and then south across Oslo Road is general commercial, with Timber Ridge being to the north. The aerial shows the location real well. This is the subject building where they're proposing to uh, locate the classroom. The, again, the tennis courts are just to the east of the subject site, single family home further east. This is the actual church sanctuary building. This is the parking they'll use. The site plan just takes in an, an outset or an excerpt of this area right here. Timber Ridge Trail, uh, you can see through the trees running uh, back to the residential development from Oslo Road. All of this commercial area on the west side of Timber Ridge Trail is undeveloped. This is the site plan, and the green portion of the building represents a single classroom and an office and the applicant's proposing 15 to 20 students in, uh, in a single classroom, grades 9 through 12. And again, no new construction for this site. There are a couple items I'd like to bring to your attention. One is a lot split on this site occurred quite a while ago, and it just basically takes into the footprint of the building a little bit more. So it's really not large enough to be a viable lot and the applicants can resolve that through a unity of title. That's one of the conditions of approval is that they do that unity of title prior to site plan release. The applicant's proposing a very small single classroom, again, 15 to 20 students. From a compatibility standpoint, we want to place another condition on the application that limits them to 25 students. And if they're going to go above 25 students, they'd have to come back before the Planning and Zoning Commission for administrative permit use. Again, that's from a compatibility standpoint, wanting to keep the use small and low intensity. We feel it's appropriate at that lower intensity. But again, if it went to a higher intensity, we'd want it to be reevaluated. And lastly, we've given you all, all the administrative permit criteria in your backup. And one of the criteria is that they provide us with a state license, and they're in the process of doing that. We want to see that state license prior to site plan release. That's another condition. With that, I'd like to get to the recommendation and staff does recommend that the Planning and Zoning Commission grant administrative permit use approval with the conditions as recommended by staff. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, any questions of staff? Uh, I see. Is the applicant here? Okay. 
Yeah, would you, any questions of anybody for the applicant? I okay. have one, George. Yeah. Good evening. I'm open for questions, uh, if you have any. Just state your name and address I'm, uh, for the record. My name is um, Richard Hope, and um, I actually wear a couple of different hats. I'm a member of Morning Star Church, and um, <clears throat> my son is also a, a prospective student at the school. And we may have to make a few modifications to the building. I think we're going to have to add a fire alarm system. We're going through that process now. And so any small modifications that have to be made inside the building, we're not doing any exterior, I'm going to act as the general contractor of record for the project. Okay, thank you. Uh, Greg? Rick, I just I think yes. I know the answer to the question, but I wanted to ask it anyway. I noticed in your application that you said uh, many of these students cannot succeed and grow in other traditional school environments that are offered, so it's imperative that you be allowed to do this. And is it a special education? I understand you may have a teacher that's worked with them before, or, um, and that's some of, that's the condition that causes Yeah, I'll students. explain a little bit about how this um, school is, is uh, coming into being. Um, I don't know if many of you are aware of this, but Tabernacle has recently, uh, this year, closed their upper school. And it's a small school. There were, um, and this lady right here, Gina, was the, um, Gina Kincaid was the upper school teacher for how many years, Gina? 18. 18 years. And I guess it just wasn't financially feasible to keep it open anymore, so they closed the school and, and Gina was out of a job. Uh, Gina's a very gifted teacher, and there are, a number of kids in there who um, have not succeeded in a more formal educational environment. Uh, this, the classroom environment that they're in, it's, they're really the whole high school is in one room. They're very close, and some of the kids are learning disabled. My own son is autistic, and we just found that there were um, uh, no good programs for us in the public school system. We felt that would um, benefit his needs and there weren't really any other private schools out there that served this need. A lot of the other parents um, felt the same exact way when, um, when Tabernacle closed and felt like they were out in the cold and had no other real good options. So uh, Gina has a heart for kids and came to us and said, you know, I'm thinking about starting a school. The one other location was looked at, but it really didn't work out, and it just so happened our church happens to hap have this extra building that really is only used for Wednesday night, Sunday school, and Sunday. Wednesday night classes in Sunday school, so we just felt like it was a good fit for both parties, and of course the church could use the revenue also. So that's how this came into being. Um, there's been meetings with the prospective parents, and they're all, we've got a bunch of parents who are really hoping and expecting this school is going to happen, and we're running short on time. Uh, but, Gina, would you tell me how many people have already confirmed that they're? I have 17 students. 17 students. You, do, you have no problem with the limitation of 25? No. If it gets to that point, um, we'll just have to look for a different facility, most likely. Okay. Any other? I have one other question, John. Um, John, I know they, they, and that private schools don't have to meet the standards that are set for public schools, and Rick mentioned the fire alarm system that they were going to put in, but they do, for the public, they do meet the county standards for the assembly of yeah, the private schools, is it correct? That is correct, and they'll do what they need to do to meet those standards. That's exactly correct. Yeah. We're expecting, we, you know, we have an architect already looking at this. Um, we're expecting to have to put it, we, and we actually have had uh, Richard Marini from the fire department out there to do an informal inspection. We're expecting to have to put a fire alarm system in. Uh, we're expecting to um, have to put in a ramp for ADA and, and possibly change out some door hardware you know, to ADA hardware, possibly even ex uh, expand the bathroom a little bit. So I think, I think it's minor. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you very much. Okay. I move approval. I'm second. Motion made and seconded. Any, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign, passes unanimously. Thank you all very much. Good luck, guys. Good luck. Good luck. Uh, okay, let's see. Next item is mission matters, I think. Planning matters, mission matters. We needed to talk, Stan and I talked earlier, we need to talk about uh, the upcoming workshops on the end of the workshops in the sand mining. So go ahead. Sure. The, uh, the, the next workshop is the last kind of topical workshop that's scheduled for, uh, code for, for enforcement and compliance. 
And, at, and that'll be the last kind of topical workshop. We've been kind of making a, a, a list, compiling a list of potential regulation changes as we go and updating those. Uh, and I've updated them since this last workshop to add some of the recommendations, such as going to special exception and expanded notice. Um, but after this next workshop on August 13th, uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission will need to make a, a report and basically and a general recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners, and then at that time the Board of County Commissioners may very well, uh, you know, formally, um, you know, tell staff to initiate formal LDR amendments and, and do that this fall. But there does need to be essentially a consensus sort of recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Commission, and there's a couple of possibilities for that. One is to is to address that at the end of the next workshop after the the compliance and monitoring issues are kind of hashed out like the other workshops that could be a time for you all to uh, to make a consensus and, and and form a recommendation that perhaps the chairman and staff could report to the board of county commissioners maybe beginning of september something like that sort of time frame or it could be done at a at a separate meeting uh, a regular p and z meeting or, or another special uh, workshop meeting so uh, it's, it's really kind of up to you all, as to, uh, or I think the chairman wants to, to get a little bit of input from you all how you would like to, to, uh, to handle that, but you've, you've got a couple I, of options. I, I, was thinking, <clears throat> I was thinking you were going to bring the list to get everybody thinking about it good. We, we've got to make this um, probably by the 1st of September. Is that a reasonable amount of time, right after Labor Day? I mean, they, this goes mid-September to the Board of County Commissioners. The, the reason for prying, bringing it up now is that you know we go through these meetings, we have a lot of recommendations and thought process, and people. Some people like to step back from the um, the crowd and think about it, and then come back in and discuss it. I'm, and it's fine with me. However, we want to do it. But I was trying to formulate for staff some form of action that we'd be looking at. If we do it on the if, if the enforcement meeting runs two and a half hours or half the time at delegated, we can do some discussion after that that same day, so we don't all don't have to get together again. The day after is the next regular meeting, so I mean it's a fairly quick response. If you want one day to think about it, you can talk about it on the 14th. Um, that seemed a little. If you can't, if you don't want to do it on 13th, 14th to me seemed pretty quick. If you want to wait longer, the next meeting is seven, the uh, August the 28th. And on the 28th, it was right before Labor Day. I think Bob's going to be out of town. You know, many people some, may be around, may be taking long weekends. I wasn't sure, so I didn't want to hoodwink the public for those who wanted to be here. But I, and I was trying to avoid having a special meeting in here, but the 14th it either works or we move to the 28th or we, come, we just come back on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday for an hour or whatever and just sit in here and deal with just sand mines but did you say you won't be here on the 14th i, I will not be here on the 14th I, I, but i'm really sure y'all do don't need well, me well no I, I, th I think we do because you've been kind of the, the forerunner of this george uh, uh, you started the mining thing a number of years ago i mean i would appreciate if we don't do it on the 14th myself so i was going to say you're trying to worm out of this yeah that's right <laughs> i don't want to have to sign those i'd rather have george here also um, well, you say that you want us to come to the meeting, the, the workshop meeting, with our recommendations already kind of set and then start working on those recommendations? I'm, 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 I'm thinking that maybe after the last meeting, it didn't, you know, we, 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 everything was kind of done and tied together quicker. We didn't go all afternoon. I mean, some, we set aside a whole afternoon, but we were probably two and a half hours, two hours into this. I, I'm, I'm also thinking that enforcement's going to be a key issue in, in the, Fixing problems, et cetera, but I mean, I'm wondering how long it really, how long you can beat the horse to death. Yeah. And if we can get done in a fairly reasonable amount of time, maybe we have time to discuss this if we all think about what we want from the previous meetings before we get here. And that's what I was hoping would happen. Uh, we may be able to check off half of these. Uh, there's 18 recommendations here. I, some of them are duplicates. Uh, you go through them, and they, I, a lot of which is covered under our current regulations. Um, some need to be tweaked, like we've all thought. The big, big, big item issues to me are you've got to decide if you want mining in Ag 1. Like it or not, that's been an issue. And then if we move to special exception use, which is a big leap from where we are today, that may solve a lot of the problems. But then we go down the items themselves. But I was kind of hoping that we get, if we do it tonight like this, you'll have a chance to think about it before we get here on the 13th. We could get a long way down the road, and maybe we could get it done. Or, well, that's what yeah. I'm thinking is, is if we can work on it, the 13th, and if we can't get it all done in the two hours or hour and a half or whatever we have left, 
Uh, I mean, we still have the 14th. Then if Whether you, if I'm we, here or not, you have the 28th. I mean, I'm, I was trying to avoid a special meeting, not, you know, as much for us as it is for the staff. They, you know, they've got regular works, and this is important for the county. But the reality is, is we've got a fairly coherent, we've got a, some, it's coming together as a coherent picture, and I'm kind of hoping we could, in a general form, we could get to what we need to reasonably. Uh, I wouldn't want to go ahead in the 14th without your presence unless... We had a consensus and knew where you That's were going. Thirteenth, yeah. If we, if we got that on the thirteenth, then we then we right. we could go ahead. Yeah, and I'll buy into that. Yeah. Could, could I ask, Steph, how long do you think the workshop? How long will it take us to get through the the enforcement issues that we're going to be discussing at the workshop? Well, I think we've heard a lot of a lot of the problems. Actually, enforcement's been discussed a lot, and I think it could be a lot like the last workshop that we had. Uh, maybe you spend an hour and a half or, or maybe even two hours, but there's still time after that because uh, we've got from 1.30 to 5, basically. That's the time slot. Everybody Shall we set aside. the agenda that says the enforcement discussion is two hours and the next three hours are, you know, coming up with the regulations, a consensus of a I, opinion? I think you have a talented chairman who can, who can <laughs> move things along love quickly. I oh, Run that man for office. <laughs> I don't think he's got any budget discretion, Stan. <laughs> uh, I, I was trying to remember when we were when this thing came up. Didn't we? Did they get? Weren't we given a deadline? To, to well, the, the time frame. You know, of course, the moratorium initially was for six months. Mm -hmm. It was extended twelve. The, the time frame is this: we really need to report back to the Board of County Commissioners in September. I wouldn't want to report back later than mid-September because if if they tell us to start the process, we've got PSAC in October, you all in November, and then the board in December, and the moratorium is up January 7th. Uh, so that's the, that's kind of the latest that we would want to go. Yeah, when you do it and set that. Okay. Well, I think that if, if um, it's kind of winging it, but you, the staff and we all seem to be good at winging it, but the fact is I think we'll shoot for the 13th and try and hold it to the time frame and then – See if we can get some kind of a consensus within the within the big um, issue, the the big picture issue. Stan, you, you know, you all have suggested that we can't do Ag One. You know, we need to mine in Ag One. But I mean, we need to just. You all need to be just as ready as we are from a discussion standpoint. For instance, if I say we're not, I mean, you all need to be stepping up to the line saying you should do this or what. We need to know your. You know, we have to reevaluate. Re emphasize positions sure. as we go down the road. Sure. And j just keep in mind, too, we, we do need to hit on the big issues, and, and this list is, a, is kind of a kitchen sink of everything. But, again, th this is a report back to the Board of County Commissioners, and there will actually be a second recommendation from you all when the formal amendments go through. So there, there may even, you know, certainly may be changes during the formal process. So we should deliver our recommendations to the Board of County Commissioners on um, the morning of August the 27th? Is that correct? Mm, maybe a little <laughs> earlier. <laughs> I'll let you use your own calendar so, on that so one. That, so that we don't endanger our appointments or anything. Yeah. <laughs> has, uh, the legal uh, our, pay, our pay raise won't change or anything. Has the legal department come up with any con – one of the things that's going to come up is whether or not – I'm going to bring up anyway – whether or not we should have mining in Ag 1. Have, you, have you reviewed that? You can – Take money. You can do anything you want. The question is, how much money do you have to really? back it up? <laughs> uh, I think you're going to find that the county attorney's office is going to recommend that the board does not eliminate a, a mining in Ag One uh, due to the potential for uh, extensive Bert Harris claims. So, you know, again, that's going to be our recommendation. You can formulate your own recommendation, but okay. we see well, it's, a, it's a step process. So you've already feel like already been there. We've we've there. been there, and uh, we feel it could be extremely expensive if. Uh, okay. That's what I want to know. You've done the homework. Well, I mean, a lot of it has to do with also if you're if for chance, by chance you were trying or were going to eliminate it, how hard do you have to? This 18 points may be looser in the exactly. other parts. Yeah. But I mean, I think that you if you're not going to do it, you need to really pay attention to the 18 or so rules plus enforcement and try and make sure you're comfortable with how you tighten up what's there. So okay, well, but, we'll have a little discussion the 13th on the Bert Harris possible taking and. If, if you have if you have know. questions, this is a good time to call Stan or Bob, walk yeah. through staff, talk to, to Glenn, legal. and kind of yeah. get formulate kind of where you're headed. It would be a good idea. Okay, that's what I think we need. George, yes. In enforce during the enforcement, will there be representatives of the sheriff's department here? Yes. For that? Please. They're on the yeah. agenda already. Yeah, we've oh. already talked. Good answer. 
Sorry. Which sheriff? Oh, no. <laughs> this will be on the 13th. <laughs> <laughs> now we better call them all in. Yeah. <laughs> all the candidates, let them take a position. Great. We have a candidate forum that afternoon. Okay. Um, any uh, attorneys, uh, any other thing under planning matters? Uh, just just really a couple quick, quick things. One is, um, again, appreciate you all meeting even for one item. You know, Normally we would try to not have a meeting with one item, but the school was really under a deadline to get to get open, so we appreciate your your time. Uh, a, a few items, just to report on July 15th, the Board of County Commissioners again took up the issue of impact fees. Uh, I think it's pretty clear that there's there's no intention to do anything with impact fees anytime soon, but uh, they did vote to um, hire a consultant and hold a workshop in September. I think it'll be and uh, to look at some of the traffic issues and methodology issues that the board still wants to look at, particularly, I think, with respect to commercial industrial development and the interaction there with, with residential. And then there, there are two, and Bob may want to add something to that if, if he wishes, and then two other items on the ISBA and the EAR that, that we want to touch on. Yeah, let me briefly touch on what the board did um, a week ago Tuesday. I think some of you may have been at the last board meeting or seen it on TV where the board considered staff's recommendation regarding uh, where we go in impact fees. At the, at the last board workshop, there were a number of questions regarding traffic impact fees and how it works and how certain types of trips are assessed from a traffic standpoint, particularly chained trips where a trip starts at home and it goes to a retail facility, a restaurant, a service place, and maybe back home, and, and how is that done? There are a lot of questions about trip length. So what the board, what, what staff suggested and the board agreed to is that besides our impact fee consultant, we get a traffic engineering consultant who can come in and really give a detailed explanation of how traffic works and how traffic <clears throat> and trips are assessed from an impact fee standpoint. With the same formula that we use now. <laughs> well, <laughs> I couldn't pass that up. No, well, you know, we, actually, we've really never gone over the travel demand forecasting model, which is different from the way we count uh, trips on trap for, yeah, for concurrency. concurrency. But I think we're going to get a traffic engineering consultant, and he's going to be able to explain this. So y'all may want to attend this workshop. We have not come up with a date, but it's probably going to be in mid-September. Okay, that'd be good. And I'll be at that one. <laughs> um, anything but, else? But let me just go over the other couple right. of the issues. You may have read in the paper today that there was a meeting of the the elected officials from all the municipalities in the county yesterday on the interlocal service boundary agreement, which is a process some of us have been working on for about a year. And actually the meeting was real productive. Uh, the two municipalities that have annexation reserve areas that extend outside of the urban service area, and that's, those are Felsmere and Sebastian, both pulled back their annexation reserve areas. There were, there were there's a lot of discussion and a lot of consensus, so things seem to be moving in the right direction. The, uh, the group, I think, came to a general consensus, gave the staff working group some direction, requested that this, the staff working group that both George and I are, member of, are members of meet sometime in the next few weeks, and then another meeting of the elected officials be held within 60 days. So. Things are looking pretty good. Some of the municipalities are moderating their positions, and uh, um, it was a very positive environment. How, how uh, although it's a work in progress, how complete? I mean, have you got have you worked through all the sections, or are you just working your way through? I mean, I, yeah, every, what, what he's getting at is Part C isn't there. How you do it isn't there. I, I just was told parts of it are not available yet, and I didn't know whether they were. It was all available yet or not. The uh, only thing not available is uh, one of the exhibits, which were the um, just the formal rules for the USAC committee. Uh, that's really not controversial at all. That's something that everyone will pretty much just agree to. The document itself is, I think, pretty close to being complete. We're just actually, in fact, the document itself I think is almost, if not complete, 
it's just a few of the exhibits to the agreement that we're sort of trying to iron out the details. Was okay. the one that said to be developed? That was the USAC rules. There's going to be a sort of a, uh, um, a committee of the uh, officials from each municipality, from each local government, and they're going to serve as an advisory function for different developments, whether it's at the annexation stage or the confluence stage. And the only thing left to be um, completed on that is just the formal rules for how the committee should meet and the quorum and, and that type of attributes, but nothing substantively. Decorum. That's an interesting um, consideration, I guess. No, no fist fight. Yeah. Well, Bob, I don't expect an answer, but <laughs> is the is the issue of uh, all players, including the commission, having to agree to uh, the request for annexation? Is that going to be a major point? Do you think? Well, it, actually, the way the agreement is set up, uh, any municipality can annex anywhere within its reserve areas and there is is no approval so it's need. kind of pre-approved well yeah i mean annexation is not subject to a unanimous agreement of the parties changing the land use the height and density in certain annexed areas is subject to unanimous agreement of the parties no, you could annex but you had to you had to have uni unanimity in right. order to change something that's not all this from where it is right and and generally that applies to annex properties outside the urban service area but there are some exceptions to that too which is what complicates the whole agreement the agreement is pretty simple in principle but then all the exceptions and and modifications make it complicated okay the the last issue i wanted to touch on is evaluation and appraisal report we're, we're getting real close to sending out some of the major elements of the year, and we're going to try to send them out so that you have a couple it's weeks time, to look yeah. at them. We, I, I think we're going to send out the transportation element year oh, right. early next week, and it is good. It That's is good. really good. You got and us back to C in the county yet? <laughs> we addressed that. In there. Um, 27. It doesn't matter. <laughs> 43. Well, I, what I would and and I'm can really can we hold this up here till I get a C? No. <laughs> I am, and I'm really hoping that we can get the land use year out, if not the end of next week, the very beginning That'd of be the great. week those after. Are, those are really the two. Those, are, those are the two big ones. Now, now let me tell you, these are going to be substantial documents. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at them. A big part of it, the, the transportation one is probably over 100 pages, but a, a lot of that is the, the actual data, the Appendix A, which is the data itself. But I would really encourage you, the most important part is to look at the evaluation of objectives and the assessment of policies, but I really encourage you to read the analysis part because that is, is where everything's brought together. Where the um, where observations are made, analysis is done, and general recommendations or possible changes are identified. Um, if and I'm hoping that we get these out, you know, in the next two weeks, both of those big elements. And I think it might be good to have another workshop. <laughs> And it's looking like thinking September. about a workshop on each, or trying to take, handle them. I mean, because they're big, both big items. I mean, yeah, right. um, we. I think land use has got a lot of tentacles attached right. to it, and that's going to be real, real difficult. Uh, I think. I mean, if probably, you're going to do one on land use, I, as much as we all don't, probably don't want to have to sit here in the stocks um, all the time. I think that we probably need it on transportation because they almost go hand in hand. I don't know if you can do them together. They'd be hard to do together, but I don't. I, I think we can try. I mean, we can of try. course, if we have so many items on our agenda at a meeting, we've almost got public meetings I every know. two weeks now since uh, we don't have a whole lot of issues coming before us. Well, let us take a look. I'm going to – I'm really hoping to get transportation out next week and give you time to look at it. Uh, but and I, And I encourage you – to look at it and give us a call if you've got any questions. And then we'll look at <clears throat> contacting you all for uh, schedule for times in a meeting and look at probably mid or late September for a workshop. Okay. Again, the ear, 
just like mining has a date the end of the calendar year we have to get it done it seems like a lot of a lot of is this gotta be is this december i thought it had to be the year had to be in in like what, don't, what, do we have to present them in, in the cha in January to move them through the process? Or the the we have to county. the board of county commissioners has to adopt the year and send it to Department of Community right. Affairs by the end of this year. Then we've got a year to actually go through and amend the comp plan consistent with the recommendations of the of the year. Okay. So December two thousand eight, the year has to be in place. December two thousand nine. The ear based amendments need to be submitted. Okay. All right. Anything else? Uh, Mr. 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 Chairman, if I may, the uh, county has been in litigation for over the last year with a former applicant of a Ministry of Use permit known as Top Hat and Tails, uh, Mercer Beck. Um, that actually ended a couple weeks ago, uh, a week before oral arguments were scheduled before the uh, circuit court sitting in their appellate capacity. They went ahead and uh, withdrew with prejudice, so uh, the county uh, officially has won that battle. Great. Oh, okay. Great. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you right? Mm -hmm. George, did you want to bring up ocean concrete? <laughs> yeah. No, we didn't. No, I didn't. Uh, ocean concrete has, um, they filed a declaratory they for status relief. or what? They've uh, filed a uh, petition for certiorari on the denial of the site plan, the denial of the site plan extension, yeah. and we just received yesterday their Birch A. Harris climb. I was going to say there's no surprise there, I wouldn't think. Nope. Next step. Okay. <laughs> but, I, have, I have one question. You said that the ear amendments had to be uh, done by the, the 9th of December? No, by the end of in December. December. Okay. When when does the board vote on the uh, the changes? When we send them up, I guess. Remember last year, it was the, like the last minute. It had to be done that day, and there were some issues. It was the last year or the year before. So I'm trying oh. to figure out how this winds up being at the last minute, and we we if there's no agreement or something needs to be changed, it can't be changed. What? Okay, we, we, we haven't done an ear for 12 years. The last time we did an evaluation or appraisal report was 1996. So it's generally, oh my God, it, it, started, some of us. It, it started out, <laughs> you had to evaluate your plan every five years, and it's gone to about a 10-year time frame. Uh, I think you might be thinking about a, a general set of comp plan amendments. Okay. Yeah, and and what, one thing we have to do, the state has a limitation on adopting comp plan amendments of twice a year. Mm -hmm. So what happens is if you've got one amendment that, that there's controversy on or you're trying to work things out, that, that sometimes gets to be a last minute thing because all of them have to go together when, are there when you any, adopt them. Are there any suggested comp plan changes? Are there any comp plan changes being suggested due to the analysis of the year? You have a year. Tens and tens and tens of changes. Okay, so if the yes. Board of County Commissioners votes on that on the 9th, when do we have to have a vote on the comp plan changes? The, what, what, what I hope we're going to do is have a number of workshops so we can go through the year recommendations and kind of get the recommendations narrowed down. When the Board approves the entire year in December, sometime in December, it'll be the evaluation appraisal will involve 15 elements of our comp plan and it will have a lot of recommended changes in there. That will go to the Department of Community Affairs and they will check and see whether the, the year document is adequate. Once DCA gives it its blessing, we've got a year to go through and actually amend our plan to incorporate those. And, and the board doesn't have to put all those in. You know, the year is a set of recommendations, and the board has to address all those recommendations in 2009. The only thing with, in, in, the, in fairness, what Don is saying, though, is if, if on the 9th or whenever you approve the year, then, in essence, you have set yourself up to approve, maybe not automatically, but the comp, the comp plan amendments that need to be done to adopt to the year. That's why the process is has right. got to and, match up. Now, you don't have to get everyone done, but you do have to right. start and, the process. And, and let me tell you one, one thing about the ear. 
Would you explain what the ear is to somebody who might be okay. in the audience listening? Yeah, yeah. Let me actually let me tell you what I <laughs> let me what, tell you what I told a committee the other day is a lot of people think planning is just forward looking. You're actually making plans. You're going to decide what to do. Well, actually. Planning is a continuous process, and one of the most <clears throat> one of the most important parts of planning is stepping back every once in a while and looking to see whether or not your plans have been successful, whether you've set the correct targets that you're looking at, and whether you've identified the correct actions to reach those targets. And that's what this process mandated by the state is. The state says, Every local government in the state has to have a comprehensive plan, and every local government in the state has to evaluate and appraise that comprehensive plan at certain intervals. And based on that evaluation and appraisal, then the local government has to go back and change the plan to incorporate what, was, what came out of the evaluation appraisal report. Let me tell you one important thing. In the ear, we don't have exact wording of what the changes should be. Uh, one, one set of recommendations we're going to make are incorporating some design standards for new development. And, and we put, maybe put in there what some of those might be, but we don't have specific wording on a policy. And that's what can be done in an ear. We can identify general changes to objectives or new objectives and general policies that we need. We don't have to do the wordsmithing at the ear time. That's what we do the next year when we actually go in to amend the plan to incorporate the ear recommendations. In light, it follow up to that. If what happens in the ear process, if we get we, we approve it in December, it goes up, and the commissioners have second thoughts or whatnot, can we amend the ear later or do we just, is it just the way we set, since it's so general, it's just the way we deal with it in the comp plan? I mean, is it, is it an adjustment? The adjustments really just don't do something or you, yeah. Mod yeah. you don't really modify the ear again until, yeah. okay. They're guidelines. Okay. Good All right. Anything else? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We are adjourned.